right, we're here with Vitaly Kamluk of Kaspersky Lab, and we are talking about some recent research that uh, was done on AdWind, which is a remote access Trojan. Um, you guys did a lot of work on this thing. It's been around for a little bit of time. It's had a, a bunch of different versions. What can you tell me about the latest version, which I think is called JSocket? Um, what makes it unique? What makes it uh, difficult for you guys to deal with? First of all, this is very unusual selection of the core platform for the backdoor. It was written purely in Java. And unlike uh, other backdoors, which are quite heavy in size, this one is very light. It's like 120 kilobytes, which uh, is which means that it should lack a lot of functionality, but it does not, because this is just a basic loader which fetches additional plugins and extends functionality on the fly, on demand, by the command of the attacker, and its capabilities are, are really insane. So it can, it can of course, uh, access your, your files, your file system, control your desktop, record sound, or, or uh, do the video cast from the webcam, or from your, from your remote, uh, uh, from your desktop, it can also steal a lot of data by like, specializing in like uh, cached passwords or uh, virtual currency, like uh, digital currency uh, wallets, uh, and so on and so forth, or VPN keys, for example. So the functionality is really like uh, very, very enhanced. And this sounds like this would be a, a good tool to use in targeted attacks and, and things like that. Are you seeing it cross over into criminal operations? What are you seeing about its use? So we believe that it is used both for targeted attacks and uh, by, by the uh, opportunistic attackers, so in the massive scam, uh, spam campaigns, uh, it's used by both. So we, we see a mixture of, of the attacker's interests. So sometimes there are spear phishing emails, sometimes it's just uh, uh, emails uh, for a larger audience. So you mentioned that it's written in Java and this is fairly a, a unique situation. Um, what are the advantages for the attacker to, to use Java um, and why, it is, why is this one so particularly effective? Yeah, this is another uh, unique feature of this uh, uh, backdoor uh, which is based on the Java platform feature itself, uh, which is a cross-platform uh, environment which makes the Trojan uh, run on, on uh, at the same time on, on Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. So it's the same file that which, which can be executed on any of these three platforms. And in addition to that, Edwin also provides an APK file which can be run on Android and controlled from the single desktop application which integrates all four platforms. Um, it, why haven't we heard more about this uh, lately? It doesn't seem like this is like the first rat that you hear about in, in targeted attacks especially. So uh, this specific was uh, has been around for several years since 2012. Uh, however, the popularity of this threat uh, grew over time. So now it's it reached certain level when everybody sees it everywhere, um, and, and this happened just during the, the past several months, I would say. That's why it got on the on the radar, on the visibility of, of many security researchers, and we, we you know uh, started researching this. Uh, Initially, the point of our research was a, uh, a targeted attack attempt against um, a, a banking institution. So somebody tried to, to get inside of the ne uh, network of a bank using this um, Advent uh, uh, backdoor. And how are they spreading Advin? Is it by traditional spear phishing or some other techniques? Yeah, we've seen this uh, distributed mostly uh, using uh, emails. So it's email campaigns and uh, spear phishing emails specifically, containing sometimes valued genuine uh, documents such as PDF or docs, just as a decoy, which uh, makes it you know, an interesting psychological effect. Once the victim receives an email, which looks like uh, coming from uh, you know, a valid requester or like a party that uh, uh, he communicated before, and it contains an attachment, which is maybe PDF and, and then the JAR file. So while JAR file looks suspicious, PDF looks uh, completely legit because it was actually stolen previously from another victim. So once a person opens this document, which looks completely much in the context of probably previous conversation or so, um, then uh, the, the, the trust level to the email is increased by the user opening the email. And then he will go and check the, the second file attached, which you know, makes creating infection immediately. Right. Do you expect to see more of these JavaScript-based uh, types of malware, or is this one just particularly sophisticated, it might be hard to copy? 
So we, we believe that uh, yeah, there will be more because now the, the bar is pretty high. So uh, a lot of attackers learned advantages of this cross-platform uh, functionality of, of the of the backdoor, and there will be huge interest in finding the replacement, um, if, if even if the, this platform goes down. So um, and also we see a huge interest of uh, Nigerian scammers to to using uh, malware, and Advent in particular is one of the, their favorite tools at the moment. So they're switching from traditional email scam to the malware, which makes it even more dangerous and because there are many, many people, like hundreds and thousands of uh, Nigerians are eager to uh, monitor victims with the help of malware. And they've had so much success over the years with email, it's kind of strange to see the, that transition. True, true. Um, it's, it's surprising, like during our research, we, we have seen with the help of some ISPs, like uh, the, these scam campaigns and how many people actually believe the content of the, of the emails, about like half percent from from our experience uh, sorry not half percent uh, half of them yeah. uh actually believed and followed certain instructions and replied and started a, a conversation with the scammers uh, which you know obviously like very alarming fact by itself yeah. so just as a final question we've heard uh especially today at, at the security analyst summit more talk about cyber criminals adopting strategies and techniques that apt groups that apt groups uh use Let's do it. Let's do it again. Do it again. <laughs> so, um, why are we seeing more cybercrime groups um, adopt these techniques used by APT groups? Well, apparently, uh, what is used by APT groups is normally like unique and interesting techniques, very advanced. So they, they are definitely learning. They are, they are trying to to copycat certain things, um, and also, uh, you know, this is just almost a trend, like a, a fashion. Mm -hmm. So uh, this sounds cool and also it, it may be presented cool and a lot of, uh, you know, beginners from cybercrime would like to be like uh, cyber spies professionals. So they, they, they sometimes mimic this and, and copy thought and techniques. Uh, but also these techniques can be can be really new. So what is exposed now now by security researchers is usually something, something groundbreaking, something that has never been seen before, which is why it is apparently getting adapted by, uh, adopted by, by the criminals. Very good. Thank you for joining me today, Vitaly.